Este es Shorni, este es Shorni. Haz que no. Mira, este no está en ninguno. Este es mi otro, este es mi otro, este es mi otro, este es mi otro. Whatever the weather, you always have to keep an eye on the reindeer. They tend to move away. This is the Arctic Circle, in Russia's far north, where the Ural Mountains divide Europe and Asia. Two Komi families live alongside their 5,000 reindeer. They are entirely dependent on their animals and have preserved an ancient way of life that is in constant harmony with nature. Alexei and Wazili have made it back to their reindeer. These animals are continually seeking food and won't stay long in the same place. In summer, they'll move on to the slopes of the Urals, where more welcoming pastures await them. The immense, desolate tundra typifies the Arctic Circle landscape. The region our families are traveling through is as large as France and Germany combined. It is home to half a million people, and just as many reindeer. Alexei, Wazili, and their families each live in a chum, which is a big tent. While the men look after the huge herd, the four women, Marina, Shura, Nita, and Ludmilla take care of the family and home. I have seven children, two daughters, five sons. Both daughters are married, and three of my sons are still single. The other two have already married. We all live here together. Marina is one of my daughters-in-law. How long have you been together? Twelve years. Twelve years? I don't want her to go. I'm very fond of her. I'd really like her to stay here always. But who knows, perhaps one day she'll go off with her husband and I'll have to be on my own. <laughs> The summers are short-lived throughout the Arctic Circle. As every September, the families and their herds are getting ready for a long, hard journey. It will take them beyond the Ural Mountains to the winter camp. Several hundred reindeer have been selected from among the huge herd to draw the two family sleds. The men wait until the last moment before catching them.
When the men return from their trip with the reindeer, it's like a celebration for us. When they're outside with the animals, they have to prepare the meals themselves and look after the reindeer. But when they return, there's lots of good food waiting on the table. We make them a good hot meal to warm them up. They need to come in from the cold and warm up their feet. Their feet are always wet when they're outside. Our husbands are young, but they've already got rheumatism. The men love these cakes. When they see them, they're just really happy. It's finished for today. As long as the wolves stay away, everything's okay. But they always come back. <laughs> and what do they do? They killed 30 of them recently. When it happens at night, there's nothing you can do. We've got guns, of course, but you can't fire in the dark. And the wolves don't appear in broad daylight. Вертолета не будет, вертолета за школьниками не будет в связи с погодой, в связи с погодой. Выезжаем на вездеходах, выезжаем на вездеходах. Как поняли, прием. А готовьте школьников, готовьте школьников. Кто меня слышит, кто меня слышит? Следующим бригадам передайте, следующим бригадам передайте. Продукты и пирожки настряпали на дорогу. Of course, I'll go and see the children as soon as I can. 
They don't live in the town itself, but in a little village with their grandmother, my mother. I'll go and see them as soon as I have an opportunity, but if I can't, I won't see them again until May next year. Marina's daughters should have already been back at school for the last two weeks. But the town and the school are 125 miles away and can only be reached by snowcat or helicopter. For two days now, Joseph has been going around to the nomad families on the snowcat to pick up the children who go to school. The tomb is divided in two. I live in this half with my family, my husband, my daughters, and my husband's two unmarried brothers. We're seven in all. My parents-in-law live on the other side with my married brother-in-law and his family. There are five of them, so that means that there are five on this side and seven on the other. In all, 12 people live in this tomb. In the evening, the men get together around the meal in order to prepare the journey. Katit. 
Да, мы идем дорогу скот. Да. И никого из вас тут не дает, а вас гуще гейта. Так что почему я видел? Ну, э? Устарис. Ага. И тебя вара легкая улыбка. И там мед бакты, и тадру бактис. Так вот место. The preparations are already well advanced. Alexei and Wazali have left their huge herd of 5,000 reindeer, who have begun their winter migration, with some of the family members leading the way. But the two men had previously selected the most robust to draw their 50 sleds with all their possessions. I'd like to get some news of the children, but I can't make a connection. That often happens because of bad weather. It also happens with the northern lights. They can interfere with the radio link. It's always the same old story. Tonight's storm caught Alexei by surprise. It brought the first snow. It's the end of September. In a few days' time, the families will have finished packing everything and the sleds will be loaded up. The men, women and animals will be completely ready for the long winter migration.
The chum are taken down and the reindeer harnessed to the sleds. That was the last night on the tundra. In summer we go into the mountains and in winter we settle in the taiga forest. It's warmer and the reindeer can eat the moss. There are always storms here in the mountains, but we're sheltered in the taiga. We switch between the two. We can't stay in the forest in summer. There's moss, but no grass. That's why we go elsewhere. In autumn, we travel 250 miles to our winter camp, and in the spring, we do the same distance in the opposite direction. Pagan ritual is played out prior to each departure. The people, animals, and sleds go around in a circle, symbolically depicting the path of the sun. It's the start of a journey that will last several weeks. The enormous herd has set the pace, and it's now followed by the families and their sleds. While traveling, the nomads will pass the tombs of their ancestors. A tough journey through the Ural Mountains is ahead, from Europe to Asia. Alexei, Wazali, and their families rarely stay in the same place during the winter migration. They travel between six and 10 miles each day and re-erect their tents and stoves every night.
Alexei, what does your wife do when you work here? My wife? She's got her own work to do. What sort of work? I don't know. Work in the tomb? She does the washing, brings wood in. There was a storm yesterday. She had to clean up inside. She's got her work cut out. And she does the cooking, of course. What do we eat? Always the same things. Stewed meat and fish. She'll certainly manage to find something to make for us. I let her decide. My wife knows what she needs to do. The convoy reaches a pass. Wazali, Alexei, and his younger brother go off to do reconnaissance on the route. We're doing the mountain part tomorrow. It snowed too early this year. That's good, because we'll be able to move more easily. The track is very stony. It's not so easy for the reindeer. They often stumble. We're going from Europe over to Asia, and by tomorrow we'll be in Asia. This is a summer pasture here, there's grass everywhere. When it snows, the grass dies. There's no longer anything to eat. That's why we go further on.
It's early December. After two months of traveling and nearly 125 miles, the convoy has reached a village on the other side of the Urals. It's a couple of miles outside the town of Salikart. It's here that part of the herd is slaughtered every year. The huge herd of reindeer is former state property inherited from the Soviet era. The two Komi families now own part of it, while the remainder still belongs to the government. We mark the reindeer so we know who they belong to. Some of the animals belong to the state, and others are ours. They all have a different mark. That's how we recognize them. We've bought some fruit and some treats for the children. We buy a little of everything, but only in small quantities. We try things first, and if we like them, we buy them in greater quantities the next time. There are loads of things in the shop, and everything's lovely. But when we get dressed up like this, everyone looks at us as if we're from another planet. We don't feel very comfortable. Сколько чуток? 
We note down the different categories of animals on this table. Female reindeer, the males, the young ones, and those that will be used for transport. The temperature has gone down to minus 40 tonight. The next day, the slaughtered animals destined for sale are frozen and stored. But there's little demand for reindeer meat nowadays. In the cities and towns, people prefer to buy cheap imported beef or pork. We're late this year. The slaughtering normally takes place in October. Because we haven't got a freezer here, we have to wait until it's cold enough outside. Normally, it's better to kill the animals in October because they're fatter. But because we haven't got any way of freezing them, we have to wait until it's cold enough outside. Then we can go back to our winter camp and rest a little. Two more months have passed and it's now March. The people and animals have traveled well over a hundred miles and reached their winter lodgings in the taiga forests. Here they'll find as much wood as they need to make fire and build new sleds. As for the reindeer, at last they've found something they can sink their teeth into. They've been here for several weeks now and this is where their long journey ends. I like it like this. But maybe my wife doesn't like it anymore. I think she needs a younger man. I'm already too old for her. Perhaps my wife would kiss me more if I shaved more often. But I haven't got time to shave every day, or for canoodling.
I work all day. So in the evening, I have my tea and go to bed. The sledge runners wear down quickly. What we do is just add another runner on top. In summer, in the mountains, they wear down very quickly. We have to repair the sleds now, as we won't have time when we start moving again. We'll be busy with the animals. Alexei, Wazili, and their families make the most of the winter break to prepare for the summer migration at their leisure. They devote part of their time to repairing their sleds and building new ones. This scarf belonged to my grandmother. She must have got it from her grandmother, I suppose. This one belonged to my other grandmother. It's at least a hundred years old. It's wonderful. We like wearing colorful clothes. It's one of our traditions. It's more fun, and it's stylish. We are women. We like being beautiful. Dear Mummy, Daddy and Albina, it's the 10th of March today and we're writing this letter because we miss you very much. But happily, it'll soon be the end of the school year. We're being good at school and working hard. And how are you? Are you well? And you, Albina, can you already read and write? How are the young reindeer? They must be big now. We miss you dearly and can't wait to see you again. Say hello to everybody. Goodbye, Mummy, Daddy and Albina. See you soon. With lots of love, Sveta and Nastya. Of course, later I'd like at least one of my daughters to live here in the tomb and for her to maintain our ancestors' way of life. We won't stay young forever. 
One day or another we'll be old and it will be our children's turn to take up the torch and herd the reindeer. If no one continues, there'll soon be no more reindeer herders. After having regained their strength in their winter lodgings, Alexei and Wazali and their families will travel through the Urals again in a few weeks, in April. They will cross the mountains and, as they do every year, they'll set up their tomb in the summer pastures on the European side. <laughs> I've spent all my life here. Why would I go to the city where everything's different? Nobody needs me over there. People need my advice here. I'm useful. But over there, I'd have no purpose. The reindeer are everything for us. They transport us, clothe us and feed us. The reindeer are our life. They're priceless. We don't need gold. We've got the reindeer. They're our gold. <laughs> 